It's a lovely hot day, and in Trumpton Market Square, everybody is buying ices from Mr. Antonio, the ice cream man. Here's Mr. Troop, the town clerk. He's buying ices for himself and the mayor. Everybody seems to have been served. Good morning, Mr. Antonio. Busy? Will you be moving on soon? Are you going to Camberwick Green? Chigley? May we come with you? If you want to buy a lolly, come as quickly as you can. If you'd rather have an ice, you will find they're very nice. Just hurry up and buy one from the ice cream man. Would you rather have a chalk ice or a cornet or a brick? Or if you buy a lolly, please don't throw away the stick. Find the nearest litter bin, put the stick and paper in, and buy another lolly from the ice cream man. Mr. Antonio arrives at Winkstead Hall. He has brought a large tin of ice cream for the Winkstead Hall tea room. One tin of vanilla, Mr. Brackett. Thank you, Mr. Antonio. Thank you, Mr. Brackett. Mr. Antonio is just about to leave when Mr. Bilton, the Winkstead Hall gardener, joins him. Morning, Mr. Antonio. I've got some wallflower plants for you. Would you come round to my greenhouse? Oh, thank you, Mr. Bilton, says Mr. Antonio. Would you like some ice cream? Oh, don't mind at all. I'll have a peppermint one, thank you. Mr. Antonio gives Mr. Bilton the ice cream and they go round to the greenhouse. Mr. Antonio is a very keen gardener and Mr. Bilton often gives him advice and help. Nothing like an ice cream on a hot day, says Mr. Bilton. Especially if... Oh! oh. What's the matter? asks Mr. Antonio. Rheumatics, says Mr. Bilton. One of my twinges. It would happen today when I've got to mow the lawn. It's that rotten old wheelbarrow that starts it up. I've told his lordship that I need one of them little motor truck things. I have to push that barrow for miles every day. That's no good for my rheumatics. I'll tell you what, says Mr. Antonio. I'll mow the lawn for you while you have a bit of a rest and enjoy your ice cream. Oh, that is kind. Very kind indeed. Thank you. It's a hard life being a gardener, Mr. Antonio. up the leaves it's a full-time job to make a garden grow ditch digging path trimming tidying the greenhouse potting in the potting shed and cutting back shoots bud nipping hedge clipping sweeping up the leaves it's a full-time job to make a garden grow There we are. Doesn't take long. Very kind of you, Mr. Antonio, and that ice cream was lovely. Don't go without your wallflowers. Here you are. Thank you very much, Mr. Bilton. I hope your rheumatism gets better soon. Goodbye. Goodbye to you, and thank you. Hello, Mr. Antonio, says Lord Belborough. Do you know I could swear that I saw you mowing the lawn just now when I looked out of my window? You did, Your Lordship. I'm afraid Mr. Bilton is having trouble from his rheumatism. Ah, yes, poor old Bilton. I promised him a motor barrow, but they are rather expensive, and I have had to pay a lot of money to have the roof of Winkstead Hall repaired. It's an old building and needs a great deal of attention. Perhaps you are going to have a really good year, says Mr. Antonio, with lots of visitors paying to see over the hall and having rides on Bessie. I hope so. The engine is a good attraction. Pity we haven't got some other things like her. Goodbye, Your Lordship. Goodbye, Mr. Antonio.
Mr. Antonio feels very sorry for Lord Belborough and his staff. It is a very hard job running a big house like Wingstead Hall. If only more visitors would come and buy tickets to see the garden and have rides on Bessie the engine. The ice cream van arrives at the Chigley Pottery. Mr. Farthing and Winnie are very pleased to see Mr. Antonio, who tells them all about the troubles at Wingstead Hall. It's strange that you should tell me this, Mr. Antonio. I'll let you into a little secret. All the people of Chigley are giving Lord Belborough a present next week as a sort of thank you for the six o'clock dancers. It's a model of a very early steam engine to add to his collection. Mr. Rumpling found it at an auction sale. It might bring in a few more visitors. Well, I certainly hope that it will, Mr. Farthing. But I'm afraid it will be some time before Mr. Bilton gets his motor barrow. Goodbye. Goodbye, Winnie. Mr. Antonio calls at Crockett's garage for petrol. Mr. Crockett knows about the special present for Lord Belborough, but he doesn't know about Mr. Bilton's rheumatism. So, Mr. Antonio is giving him all the details. One week later, and an important telephone call is made to Wingstead Hall. Wingstead Hall? Ah, yes, Mr. Swallow. A large crate for Lord Belborough. Strange, he's not expecting anything. I see. Oh, very good, Mr. Swallow. I'll tell his lordship immediately. Goodbye. With bats in the belfry and beetle in the beams, the stately home of England is not all that it seems. A constant battle must be fought to fend off all decay. The only way to meet the cost is hold an open day. <clears throat> Excuse me, Your Lordship, but Mr. Swallow has just phoned. Could we please collect a large crate from the wharf in Bessie? Certainly, Brackett, but we're not expecting anything, are we? Uh, no, my lord, but the crate is clearly addressed to you and marked not to be opened until the six o'clock whistle. How very odd. Come on, let's get changed. In double quick time, Lord Belborough and Mr Brackett have changed into overalls. Bessie's boiler is already alight. There's plenty of steam. driver of a train and I ride on the footplate there and back again under bridges over bridges to our destination puffing through the countryside there's so much to be seen passengers waving as we steam through a station stoke up time and for the signal is at green flies by when I'm the driver of a train and I ride on the foot place there and back again in the cutting through the tunnel rushing clanking on the track wheezing fist and smoky funnel turning wheels go clickety clack time flies by when I'm the driver of a train and I ride on the foot place there and back again Treadle's Wharf, Mr. Swallow is ready to operate his crane. All ready, your lordship. One crate coming up. (laughs) 
There we are, your lordship. Thank you very much, Mr. Swallow. I say, Brackett, isn't it exciting? I can hardly wait for the six o'clock whistle so that we can open it. It's six o'clock. Time to open the crate. To Lord Belbra, from everybody in Chigley, thank you for the six o'clock dancers. Oh, thank you, thank you all very much. What a magnificent model. Here's Mr Crockett. He's towing a small trailer. He's hooking it to the back of the model engine. And I would like to give a special present to Mr. Bilton, he says. With this trailer, he'll be able to use the model engine to help him keep the Wingsted Hall gardens in the beautiful condition that they are in now. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. Crockett. That's just what I wanted. It's a lovely day at Murphy's Bakery, and Mickey Murphy, the baker, is busy loading up his van. Good morning, Mr. Murphy. Ready to go on your rounds? Are you going to Trumpton? Chigley? May we come with you? The rackety tackety baker's van. Two white loaves and a cherry cake for Lord Belborough. Baker. Good morning, Mr. Murphy. Good morning, Mr. Brackett. Thank you. Thank you. Mickey is just going to drive off when Lord Belborough approaches him. Good morning, Mr. Murphy. Good morning, Your Lordship. Mr. Murphy, I have a problem and I would be most grateful if you could help me to solve it. I'll do my best, says Mickey. It's the apple crop this year. It's too big. Too big? Yes, says Lord Belborough. It's been a marvellous year for apples. All the apple trees in my orchard are weighed down with fruit. I've never seen anything like it. 
I'll store as many as I can, and Mr. Clamp, the greengrocer, will take some, but there will be lots and lots left over. Well, says Mickey, I could take a few for apple tarts, but not very many. I'll ask people as I go on my rounds. Good, says Lord Belborough, but remember, it's rather urgent. Unless they're picked soon, they will fall and bruise. I'll remember. Goodbye, Your Lordship. Polly's mill, the sails are turning merrily, and Windy Miller is very busy. Windy Miller, Windy Miller, sharper than a thorn. Like a mouse, he's spry and nimble when he grinds the corn. Like a bird, he'll watch the wind and listen for the sound. Which sails he has the wind he needs to make the sails go round. Windy sees the baker's van coming up the hill. He goes to stop the mill sails turning. <laughs> Hello, Mickey, says Windy. Have you brought me my walnut cake? Of course, Windy, how could I forget, says Mickey. Mmm, thank you, says Windy. By the way, says Mickey, Lord Belborough has lots of spare apples this year. Can you suggest a use for them? Yes, says Windy. Apple juice. Delicious drink. Just the thing for those six o'clock dancers. We could crush the apples in my cider press. I'd want some help, of course, and some sugar. Splendid idea, says Mickey. I'll telephone Lord Belborough as soon as I get back. <laughs> Winkstead Hall. Ah, uh, yes, Mr. Murphy? Apple juice? Yes, yes, I see. Thank you very much. I'll tell his lordship immediately. Goodbye. And Mr. Brackett, the butler, hurries off to speak to Lord Belborough. Excuse me, Your Lordship, but Mr. Murphy has just phoned. He says that Mr. Windy Miller has agreed to turn some of the apples into apple juice for the six o'clock dancers, if he can have some help and some sugar. Apple juice, what an excellent idea, Brackett. Now, first we shall need some men with ladders to pick the apples. Sounds like a job for the Trumpton Fire Brigade, Your Lordship. Quite. Ring up Captain Flack immediately, Brackett. Trumpton Fire Station. Captain Flack here. Hello, Mr. Brackett. Pick some apples? Yes, of course we can. Right away, right away. McGrew, Cuthbert, Dibble, Grub.
Well done, men. You've done splendidly. We're ready for your kind assistance with the forklift loader now, Farmer Bell. A go-ahead farmer is Jonathan Bell, who works his farm and works it well. He doesn't hold much with the good old days in modern times, use modern ways. Electric, mechanical, all that is new, which does the work that men used to do. He swears by it all and he proves it too on his modern mechanical farm. Excellent, says Lord Belborough. Thank you very much, Farmer Bell. I trust that you and your men would enjoy a trip on Bessie, Captain Flack. Thank you, Your Lordship, says Captain Flack. Mount the train. driver of a train and I ride on the footplate there and back again under bridges over bridges to our destination puffing through the countryside there's so much to be seen passengers waving as we steam through a station stoke up time and for the signal is at green Time flies by when I'm the driver of a train And I ride on the footplate there and back again In the cutting through the tunnel Rushing, clanking on the track Wheezing, fist and smoky funnel Turning wheels go clickety-clack Time flies by when I'm the driver of a train And I ride on the footplate there and back again The train arrives at Windy's barn, just below the mill. Windy has all the help he needs. Mr Cresswell has sent him some factory workers, as well as some sugar. drop of juice is pressed from the apples. Splendid work, says Lord Belborough. Thank you all very much. I trust that you will all return with me in Bessie. We'll just be in time for the six o'clock whistle. Come along, gentlemen.
It's a lovely day on Trumpton Canal, and Mr. Rumpling is busy polishing his barge. Good morning, Mr. Rumpling. Will you be moving on soon? Are you going to Chigley? Treadle's Wharf? May we come with you? Chugging along between banks of green willow, buttercup, meadow, sweet nettle and dock, Sheep in the meadow, so peaceful and still, oh, and just round the bend we reach Camberwick Lock. Nothing is better than being at large, in charge of a gay inland waterway barge. Sun on the water is glinting and gleaming. Soon we are leaving the Camberwick Lock. Pass by the anglers all drowsily dreaming. And far in the distance chimes Trumpton Town Clock. Nothing is better than being at large in charge of a gay inland waterway barge. Mr. Swallow, the wharfinger, is pleased to see his old friend. Good morning, Mr. Rumpling. What have you got for me today? Two crates for Trumpton Town Hall, a package for Munnings the printer, and uh, one crate marked Books with Care for Lord Belborough. Good, says Mr. Swallow. Leave that one on board and we'll unload the rest. And Mr. Swallow goes to start his crane. Here's Farmer Jonathan Bell. He's got a crate of scrap metal to go on Mr. Rumpling's barge. You're just in time for loading, says Mr. Rumpling. Can I help? asks Farmer Bell. Oh, thank you, says Mr. Rumpling. All this cargo has to be unloaded except that crate there, and we'll get yours on while we're doing it. Mr. Swallow is ready. He starts his crane. Lifting the boxes and barrels and bundles Stacking the drain pipes and logs from the woods A crane does the work as it rattles and rumbles Shifting the lumber and loading the goods Thank you very much, says Mr. Rumpling. You've been a great help, Mr. Bell. What happens to that crate for Lord Belborough? asks Jonathan. Oh, he'll call for it later on in Bessie the engine, says Mr. Rumpling. That's why we've left it on board. It will be lifted straight up to him from the barge. There goes Mr. Swallow to phone him now. Hello, Wingsted Hall. Good morning, Mr. Brackett. Swallow here. Will you please tell Lord Belborough that a crate marked Books with Care has arrived for him at Treadle's Wharf? Oh, yes, thank you, Mr. Swallow. I'll tell his lordship immediately. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Mr. Brackett, the butler, hurries to find Lord Belborough. <clears throat> Excuse me, my lord, but Mr. Swallow has just phoned to say that a crate of books for you has arrived at Treadle's Wharf. Splendid, says Lord Belborough. I've been waiting for those books. They're very rare and valuable. Come on, Brackett. We'll collect them in Bessie. Let's get changed. (laughs) 
Lord Belborough and Mr Brackett have changed into overalls. Now they're going to start Bessie, the old steam railway engine. Come on, Winnie, want to ride? Destination, puffing through the countryside, there's so much to be seen. Passengers waving as we steam through a station. Stoke up, I'm and for the signal is at green. Time flies by when I'm the driver of a train, and I ride on the foot place there and back again. In the cutting through the tunnel, rushing, clanking on the track, wheezing, piston, smoky funnel, turning wheels go clickety clack. Time flies by when I'm the driver of a train, and I ride on the footplate there and back again. Morning, your lordship. We're all ready for you. And Mr Swallow swings the hook of the crane over to the barge. Mr Rumpling is not paying attention. He has just discovered that some paint has been scraped off the side of his barge. Now, I wonder when that happened, he says to himself. Mr Rumpling, hook up, please. Mr. Rumpling, cooing. Oh, 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 yes, yes, Mr. Swallow, right away. But Mr. Rumpling is still thinking about his scratched paint, and he is fixing the hook of the crane to the wrong crate. Ready, Mr. Swallow? Oh, dear, something's wrong with the brake. The crate has fallen into the canal. My books, my valuable books, they're ruined, cries Lord Belborough. What are we going to do? I'm very sorry, your lordship, says Mr Swallow, but my crane is completely broken down. I'll ring Pippin Fort and Crockett's garage for assistance. Don't get too upset now. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Lord Belborough is very upset indeed. Hello, Pippin Fort. Uh, Treadles Wharf here. We urgently need your help. We need a frogman and several willing hands to rescue a crate of valuable books from the canal. Very good. We'll leave immediately. <laughs> Within a few minutes, the army truck is on its way to the wharf. Private Armitage is the best swimmer, and he is wearing a frogman's outfit. There's the spot, Captain, says Mr Swallow. Private Armitage, in you go. Find the crate and fix the hook of the crane on the breakdown truck to it. Oh, I do hope he finds it soon, says Lord Belborough. He's done it. Ha! 
Hooray! Well done, Armitage. Now to see if the books are badly damaged. What is it? asks Mr. Rumpling. Why are you laughing? Oh, it, it's all right, Mr. Rumpling, says Lord Belborough. Thanks to you, my books are completely undamaged. But I don't understand, says Mr. Rumpling. You made a mistake, says Lord Belborough. You fixed the hook of the crane to the wrong crate. This is Farmer Bell's crate of scrap metal. A ducking in the water doesn't harm that. My books are still safe in the crate on your barge. Thank you all very much. Now, if you'll kindly lend a hand, we'll load the books on to Bessie and we'll all go to Wingstead Hall. We'll be there just in time for the six o'clock whistle. <laughs>